Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Book of Mormon podcast. This is Brad Constantine, and this discussion will be regarding 2 Nephi chapter 19 and Isaiah chapter 9. And so we'll just immediately go into this one. Verse 1, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. Remember, we talked about the, the prophecy about uh, the northern kingdom of Israel being destroyed by the Assyrians, that they would be taken captive. This is a continuation of it. However, there's some uh, prophecies regarding the Savior in here too. When at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Now, during Jesus' day, these were the lands of Galilee. And afterwards did more grievously afflict by the way of the Red Sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, meaning the Messiah. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light, hath the light shined. Jesus lived in Galilee and was the light to the people who knew him. Verse 3, Thou hast multiplied the nation meaning Adam, uh, Abraham's posterity, and increase the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. So verses 3 through 7 deal with the coronation of Jesus as king of kings during the millennium. So pay attention to that as we get through this. W. Uh, w. Cleon Skousen said in the King James Version, this verse states that the people would not increase their joy, but the Book of Mormon gives the correct rendition. In fact, the King James translators inserted a marginal note indicating there was some question about the word not. The Revised Standard Version leaves out the not, just as the Book of Mormon did nearly a century earlier. The word not obviously contradicts the next two phrases, which say that the joy of the people will be so exuberant that it will be similar to the happiness which always accompanies the gathering in of the harvest or the happiness of those occasions when the booty always uh, when the booty is about to be distributed after a long hard fought campaign for victory verse 4 for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder the rod of his oppressor these are tools of the master all over slaves in biblical times the staff and rod were used by taskmasters on slaves a yoke was a wooden frame designed to harness together beasts of burden. These three items, the yoke, staff, and rod, signify oppression or the burdens placed on Israel by its neighbors. And that was from uh, visualizing Isaiah. Verse 5, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So notice the change that uh, it will be with burning instead of by uh, Close hand-to-hand -hand combat, it sounds like. Verse 6. For, and he's talking about all of the preceding has happened because, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Elder Holland said the fact that the government would eventually be upon his shoulder affirms that all the world will one day acknowledge that he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and one will and one day rule over the earth and his church in person. All can take comfort from the fact that because the government and the burdens thereof will be upon his shoulders, they will be lifted in great measure from our own. This is yet another reference in Isaiah to the atonement, the bearing away of our sins, or at very least in this reference, our temporal burdens on the shoulders of Christ. Continuing verse 6, and his name shall be called. Now I want you to notice something in this, that the, the Hebrew does not have commas. And so oftentimes we stop when we see, when we read wonderful and then counselor, but there's no comma in between. It should just read, and he sh his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Elder Maxwell said, Jesus is even described as the Father because he is the Father creator of this and other worlds. Furthermore, he is the Father of all who are born again spiritually. When we take upon ourselves his name and covenant to keep his commandments, we then become his sons and daughters, the children of Christ. Additionally, since he and the Father are one in attributes and in purpose, Jesus acts for the Father through divine investiture of authority, sometimes speaking as the Father. These titles of Christ represent the type of service he would render to his people. He has four titles, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of government and peace, there is no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. 
the confusion of the telestial world will be replaced by the society of Christ. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And Isaiah 9 is divided into four subsections. The first deals with pride, verses 8 to 12. The second concerns evil leaders, 13 to 17. The third decries the lack of love and kindness for others, 18 to 21. And the fourth refers to social injustice, which is 10 verses 1 through 4. The four subsections are part of a single prophecy, but are divided structurally with an identical poetic, poetic refrain at the end of each section. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So notice that even though there's lots of bad things happening and that the people are wicked and so on, it still always mentions that, that his hand is stretched out still. In other words, he's calling them to repentance and will forgive them if they'll just but come. Verse 8, the Lord sent his word unto Jacob and it hath lighted upon Israel. This is directed to Ephraim, the northern kingdom. It also applies to us today. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Again, the northern kingdom will be taken captive, but the Lord will stretch forth his hand still and accept them if they'll just repent. For the people turneth not, they don't repent unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore will the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, meaning the head meaning government and the tail meaning false prophets. Branch and rush in one day, the ancient he is the head and the prophet that teacheth lies he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For every one of them is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Again, this is the description of the, the battles that are happening here. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, the wicked shall destroy each other. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. In other words, there's going to be a famine, and there won't be enough, even those that might steal from others, it's going to be not enough to, to help them. 21. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh. Ephraim will be against Manasseh, and Manasseh will be against Ephraim, and they will also be against Judah. They together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. In other words, in spite of Israel's rejection of Christ, his hand would still be outstretched, beckoning for them to return to him. I hope that we won't get into this situation where he's uh, causing bad things to happen so that we'll turn unto him, but that we'll be humble enough on our own to, uh, to always return to our Savior and to repent when we need to quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. See you next time.